Welcome to the first video tutorial on molecular cloning, developed by DIY Biochronian. This tutorial is for those who want to learn how to tackle a molecular cloning project using open source software, both to design and debug all experimental steps. This tutorial is for the beginner DIY biologist, but to be able to fully understand it, some background knowledge on plasmids, genes, and PCR is required. For more information, we'd like to refer you to our official website, diybiochroningen.org. There you can find this video and all the files, notes, and relevant links to successfully design your experiment. It's our intention to provide you with all the necessary resources to get started, so don't hesitate to contact us with feedback or questions. The software used in this tutorial is called Serial Cloner. Now, there are many software packages that can be used instead, but I've chosen Serial Cloner, first because it's cross-platform and open source, and secondly because it's both easy to use and it's also very complete. This tutorial is divided into two parts. During the first part, we're going to install Serial Cloner and set up all the files we need. In the second part, we will simulate step-by-step -step a restriction enzyme-free cloning experiment. Our goal will be to copy the gene that codes for the green fluorescent protein, which from now on we'll call GFP from a DNA source, that can be either a plasmid or genomic DNA, and copy it into a cloning vector, which is used to multiply and store the genetic information. This technique is copy and paste of molecular biology, and you'll use it any time you want to copy genetic information from any source to any plasmid. There are many ways to copy and paste DNA. In my opinion, the restriction enzyme-free approach is the best one to start with, since it does not require expensive restriction enzymes and is based only on PCR and ligation. Little or no purification steps are required. Other approaches involving restriction enzymes, and more complex strategies, will be covered in future tutorials. Okay, now let's get started with part one. First of all, we need the software, Serial Cloner. Let's search for it in Google and download it from the official website. I'm using a Mac, so I'm going to download the OS X version. A Windows and Linux version are also available. Let's install in the Applications folder, and we're done. Step 1 is now complete. Let's go on. Now that we installed the software, we need DNA sequences to play with. More precisely, we need the GFP coding gene. We can look for it on the NCBI website. Just Google NCBI and, well, there it is. Perfect. Now we search for GFP. and we're going to have a look in the search results for nucleotide sequences. Here we can find thousands of vectors and constructs that contain the GFD gene. For the scope of this tutorial, it's best to choose a plasmid. So we're looking for circular DNA. Let's pick this one just to make a case study. As you can see, this page contains all the information regarding the plasmid we just picked. The whole sequence is at the end of the document. While at the top, we see other information, like the list of proteins coded for by the plasmid and various notes. If we search here, we find the lines that indicate the vector codes for GFP, exactly what we are looking for. Here we find the relevant indices to the coding sequence, and this is all we need to start. 
At this point, we can open Serial Cloner. When the program opens up, it shows two main areas, the Functions panel and the Sequence window, which for now is still empty. What we want to do is to copy the sequence of the whole plasmid and paste it into this area. So we go back to the web page, we copy the sequence, only the sequence, and paste it into the sequence windows in Serial Cloner. Note that the program states that the sequence is linear, but since we know that it belongs to a circular plasmid, we're going to make it circular. To do this, click Sequence from the menu and then Circularize. Now, as you can see, Circular Cloner correctly recognizes the topology of the sequence as circular. Let's also copy the name of the vector and use this information to name our file and let's save it. At this point, we are ready to look into the sequence and get some insight into this vector. To do so, Serial Cloner offers two options, Graphic Map and Sequence Map. If we click on Graphic Map, we can see a circle that resembles our vector with a bunch of tags that refer to unique restriction sites. We do not need this kind of information right now, but in general you can turn it on or off by checking the box at the top here. Let's have a look to see what happens when we click on Sequence Map. A window pops up that contains the complete sequence of the plasmid. Both strands, plus and minus, are printed, as well as the translations in between. Note that the translations refer to the three possible reading frames. Up to now, the sequence map does not contain much information. You can only spot the restriction sites, and that's about it. The rest is just an endless list of A, T, C, and G. Now comes one of Serial Cloner's best features. In the Functions panel, once you click on the Scan button, the software checks the whole sequence and detects any parts it recognizes. Scrolling through the sequence, you can see how some parts of it are colored. If you click on it, you can quickly see the name of that specific sequence. Here, for example, we spotted a LAC-Z alpha peptide, and immediately after that, a T7 promoter. This huge green sequence here is the one that codes for chloramphenicol resistance, which is what CMR indicates. And here, we have a kenamycin resistance gene. Cool. We already know that this plasmid codes for a laxy alpha peptide and two distinct antibiotic resistances. If you now have a look at the graphic map, you notice that these new features appear. Protein coding regions are indicated by arrows. The orientation of each arrow resembles the transcription orientation. The base of each arrow is where the protein starts, in the end terminus part, while the tip or head of the arrow is the end, called the C terminus. Also, if the arrow points clockwise, it means that the gene is on the plus strand, while if it points counterclockwise, it means that the gene is on the minus strand. First of all, we need to locate the exact sequence that codes for GFP. This information can be found in the NCBI webpage we have loaded in the browser. Here you see the protein sequence of the GFP, but what we are looking for is the genetic code. This line gives the position of the sequence where we can find it. We input these numbers here in this little text box in the sequence window in Serial Cloner. and now hitting enter, you will select the sequence in between the indices. The sequence starts with an ATG codon, a classic methionine start codon. Now let's just copy the selected sequence and add a new entry feature by clicking the plus button. We insert the name of the feature, GFP, and we paste its sequence here. 
We can also assign a color to the sequence. In order to spot it easily, let's pick purple. We can input some more details on the sequence. For example, we can specify that it's a gene. If we again check in the feature database, we can now see that our new entry is present. Perfect. Let's scan the plasmid again. Bingo! Here in purple is our GFP gene. Now let's have a look at the graphic map of our plasmid, and there is the GFP gene. Beautiful. The donor plasmid is ready. We can save it and go on with the next step. So to quickly recap, we found a plasmid coding for the GFP and we set it up for use in the serial cloner. Now we need a receiver plasmid into which we will paste the GFP gene. A good plasmid to use is the PUC19 or PUC19, a very well known cloning vector in use since the 90s, which is a pillar of recombinant DNA technology. As we did before, we first search for it on the web. We can do it directly on the NCBI website, or to mix things up, let's search for it on another website. For example, lablife.org is a good place to look for sequences. Even if it's discontinued right now, it's still a good source of data. Now, Let's copy the sequence. Create a new file in Serial Cloner and paste it in. Click on Scan and let's save it. This is the end of the first part of the tutorial. In the next part, we're going to simulate, step-by-step, -step, a restriction enzyme-free cloning experiment using the serial cloner software and the files we just prepared.